This will be a short review of finding the area between curves, which is an application of integration. Let's begin by looking at the basic idea we use when finding the area between curves. So if we have these left and right bounds, A and B, and we're finding the area between the functions, we can think about it as the area under the upper curve subtracted by the area under the lower curve. So that would yield the area we're interested in. And as you're probably already familiar with, area from a calculus perspective can be found by integrating a function. So symbolically we can say that um, the area between two curves is found by integrating from an x value of a to an x value of b and we're doing the upper function minus the lower function. So that's pretty much the process we'll be using. And just to note real quickly, we're talking about integration with respect to x here, but you could have um, a situation where you're integrating with respect to y, in which case you'd be integrating the right function minus the lower function. Maybe not as common, but still good to stop and think through for yourself. So a couple possible cases. Uh, case one would be that one function is always greater than the other. So this image here on the left, we can see that the two functions intersect at an x value of 0 and an x value of 4. And the finite bounded region that's shown in purple here can be found with one integral because this downward facing parabola is always greater than the linear function for the region we're interested in. So we would be doing the downward facing parabola minus the linear equation and the limits of integration here would again be from the x value of 0 to the x value of 4. So that is the more simple case. The second case um, is basically going to be the two functions crossing at least once. So the image I'm showing here um, is showing where the functions cross once and this point of intersection right here at pi over 6 demonstrates that at first in this orange region we have an upper function that I'm highlighting here in red but after the point of intersection that function then becomes the lower function and similarly in the orange region the region uh, the function I'm underlining in blue is lower but then after the point of intersection that function becomes upper. So it would take two separate integrals because the upper and lower are switching. In the wording, you'll notice I've said the two functions cross at least once, and you'll need at least two integrals because upper and lower switch. Now I could draw a couple functions that continuously intersect, and depending upon which area I'm finding, I could need more than two integrals to set that up, but we'll leave that out of our discussion for right now. So some challenges with the process, pro probably the greatest challenge I've seen is just finding the limits of integration because from the graph we can often see which function is upper and which function is lower or we might have a good knowledge of, of um, just basic functions, what they look like. So we can find the limits either algebraically, which we'll show, or graphically, just depending upon what you're used to, what you're comfortable with, and perhaps what technology you have access to. The process that we're talking about here applies to daily life in a lot of different ways. One example I'll mention briefly would be finding the area of the clay infield in a baseball field. Um, you can see that this guy here could be describing an upper function, but we haven't even described what that line, what that function, what that curve is defined as. And then we have perhaps a lower function and maybe you think about some symmetry. So just to, to think about a practical way this idea could be used, we're figuring out how much uh, clay we need. A little bit more textbook type problem is this one here, where we're asked to sketch the region enclosed by the given curves and find its area. So I'm going to go ahead and give a rough sketch by hand, and then we'll talk about the limits of integration and actually go through the process. So. Uh, I can tell in looking at these two functions that they're both parabolas. So we'll start off with this y equals 12 minus x squared. 
it might help to just think of it as y equals negative x squared plus 12. I know that's just a simple rewrite, but it's downward facing shifted up on the axis by 12 units. So I'll just give, again, a pretty rough sketch here of that one. And then y equals x squared minus 6. This one is going to be upward facing shifted down on the axis 6 units. So a little sketch here with not perfect accuracy, but enough to help me understand that I'm interested in this region here. So we can see that's the bounded area we're able to calculate. So I really need to know what the limits of integration are. And those are found by, again, finding really where these functions intersect. So let's find the intersection, and then we'll set up the calculus part of finding the area through integration. So I will set 12 minus x squared, the first function, equal to x squared minus 6. I'm going to go ahead and just move all my x squareds to one side, so I'll add x squared to the right. I'll add 6 to the left. We'll divide by 2, and we'll square root both sides. So it looks like the x locations of intersection are at 3 and negative 3. So that tells me that this point over here has an x value of negative 3. Uh, you can verify that the corresponding y value is 3, just for completeness there. And then over here, again, the x value of 3, it will also have a y value of 3. So I could make use of some symmetry when I find the area here. Um, by that I mean I could just find the area on the left or the right of the y-axis and then simply double it. Um, feel free to use that when you're sure of symmetry. But I'll go ahead and just set it up in perhaps a little bit more standard way. So basically I need to remember that the 12 minus x squared is the upper function for this region of interest and the x squared minus 6 is the lower function. So we'll be setting that up as an integral. So the area here will be found by integrating from a lower x value of negative 3 to an upper x value of 3. Going back one more time to our screen, we'll be doing the upper function of 12 minus x squared. And this will be subtracted by the lower function of x squared minus 6. So we have our upper minus our lower with respect to x. And uh, I'm always a fan of cleaning up prior to integrating, just makes our life a little easier. So cleaning up within the integral, we're going to be integrating really a negative 2x squared and a plus 18. We'll go ahead and do that. Oops. So integrating our negative 2x squared, we'd get back negative 2x cubed over 3. Integrating 18 would just give us 18x. We'll evaluate that from negative 3 to 3. I think you see now why symmetry might be nice. So I'll just show plugging in the upper limit of 3 in for all my x's. And then we'll be subtracting off the lower limit of negative 3 going in for all our x's. Sorry about running out of space here. Let's see, so 18 times negative 3. So the evaluation of this will, resu will result in the area between the curves. And I know that looks a little messy, but without too much trouble, you'll clean it up and find that the area between the curves is 72 square units. So that's just a little reminder of how we find area.